So before we get the session underway, I just wanted to say a few words of welcome to put this event in context. Now, as you probably know, March the 8th is International Women's Day, and thousands of events are held throughout the world to inspire women and to celebrate achievements. Now, that date has been observed since the early 1900s, a time of great expansion and turbulence in the industrialised world, um, you know, that saw booming population growth and the rise of radical theologies, ideologies. Now, that is a day when we take time to reflect on the sacrifices made by women worldwide who brought about positive changes for us. But one day a year is not enough. And during my term as presiding officer, one of the themes I am concentrating on is equality. And this year, the focus is on women. And today's seminar will explore the barriers to women's participation and representation. I'm holding a series of similar regional events across Wales, which will culminate in a national conference in November. And I hope that conference will build on the outcomes of each of these events and will task me, my fellow Assembly members and women like you uh, to ensure that barriers to participation are removed. Now, the Assembly has a legal duty under the Government of Wales Act to promote equality. And I'm very pleased that this duty has been taken extremely seriously since the Assembly came into being in 1999. Now, delivering equality has become part of our custom and practice. practice. And importantly, and some of you may have heard me say this already, that we don't do it because we have to do it. We do it because we want to do it and because it's the right thing to do. Wales must be a fair, equal and enjoyable place to live. Now, a couple of months ago, I addressed a group of women from Libya and Jordan who came to, who'd come to learn about what we do here in Wales. <coughs> and it was a stark reminder of the continuing struggle to get women's voices heard in some parts of the world. Now, I'm delighted that Mary Emlyn, Artistic Director here at Gallery, has agreed to chair today's session. And she will introduce our panel, who will continue... Um, who are continuing to push at artificial barriers that are put in the ways of women in Wales today. I hope you enjoy the event. Please, um, we'd like you all to take part. Don't feel like shrinking violets. I don't think we've got any shrinking violets, certainly none on this table. Um, and I do hope that you enjoy the day. Diolch yn fawr. Mari. Diolch yn fawr i Rosemary Butler, Llywydd y Cynulliad Cenedlaethol am ei chyflwyniad i'r seremoni bwysig hon sef seminar menywod mewn bywyd cyhoeddus. Diolch i chi hefyd am ddefnyddio galeri a dewis galeri fel canolfan ar gyfer y seminar hon. Dim ond ys ychydig dros ddau fis rydw i wedi bod yn y swydd yma fel cyfarwyddwr artistig galeri, a swn i'n hoffi nodi wrth basio bod safle menywod o fewn y celfyddydau yn arbennig yn yr ardal hon yn galonogol iawn. Mae'n rhagflaenu fi yma Elena Roberts wedi ffenodi'n gyfarwyddwr artistig pontio y Mangor, ac mae Betsan Llwyd ar yr un dwrnod â fi wedi dechrau ar ei swydd hithau fel cyfarwyddwr artistig cwmni theatr Barakaws yma yng Nghynarfon. Felly, mae'r celfyddydau gobeithio yn saff yn nwylo merched ar hyn o bryd yn yr ardal yma. Ond heddiw, rydyn ni am glywed gan banel o fenywod sy'n flaengar mewn amryw o feisydd. Mae gynnon ni yma dair sy'n y siampl i ni gyd o'r hyn sy'n bosib i fynywod mewn bywyd cyhoeddus i gyflawni. Tair sy'n weithgar ac yn arbenigo mewn meisydd fel addysg, busnes, rhwydweithio, gwyddoniaeth ac un sydd hefyd yn gadeirydd Ffederasiwn Sefydliadau'r Merched yng Nghymru. Ond cyn i mi wadd y dair sydd ar y panel heddiw i siarad ymgrynno am y rhwystrau maen nhw wedi hwynebu yn ei gyrfaoedd, ac falle hefyd i'r oed awgrymiadau ar beth y lyd i wneud i oresgyn uh, rhai o'r rhwystrau yma. Gaiwch at goffa chi y bydd yna gyfle cyn cloi y seminar yma i gael trafodaeth uh, ac i chi uh, ofyn cwestiynau neu wneud unrhyw sylwadau yn sgil yr hyn y fydd yn cael ei drafod uh, gan y panelwyr. A mi fydd y llywydd yn cloi'r seminar gyda'i sylwadau hi ar yr hyn sydd wedi drafod yma heddiw. Felly yn gyntaf, i rannu phrofiadau ni yma pnawma, mae Nina Sardar. Yn 2000 a 9, er i bod i'n gweithio'n llawn amser, sefydlodd Nina rhwydwaith busnes bai colwyn fel rhwydwaith ddi elw yn y dref. Ac yn yr un flwyddyn, cafodd ei derbyn fel cyfarwyddwr ac is-gyderydd i eiangar rhwydwaith merched Gogledd Cymru 
a hithen dridig un mlwydd oed. Wedi degawd o weithiau'n y diwydiant creadigol, lansiodd Nina Free to Network, sefydliad rhwy dweithio busnes annibynnol yng Ngogledd Cymru. Mae Free to Network bellach yn cynnal dros 200 o ddigwyddiadau yn flynyddol ar hyd a lled Gogledd Cymru yn Sir Gair ac yn Sir Amwythig. Mae'n alawer mwy y gallwn ni ddweud am Nina, ond mi dewa un fan hyn, a gadael i Nina rannu ei phrofiadau hi efo ni. Diolch yn fawr, Nina. Thank you very much, Mary. It's a bit unusual hearing your voice twice in simulation, in the English translation. So I, I knew I was coming up, definitely. Um, thank you very much, Rosemary Butler, for inviting me um, today and to today's hosts. Um, and chair, Mary. Um, my name's Nina Sadar. Um, I'm, I'm now 34 years old. <laughs> um, I'm wife to Armour for nearly eight years um, and mum to Zach, six years old, going on 16. <laughs> um, I've been running my own business, Free to Network, for the past two years and previously I've worked in just private sector organisations in North Wales. Um, I want to start by saying that I'm proud to be a woman in business, and in particular, a woman in business in Wales. Um, when I was invited by Rosemary to be on the panel, um, I started by making a list of all the jobs that I've ever done. Because <laughs> it's not something that I really look at the past. Um, business people do tend to focus on the future quite a lot. So, um, so I made a list, and I've worked for nine companies in 11 roles. <laughs> which I was quite surprised about. Um, so have I encountered any barriers along the way? Well, of course, um, as most people here, we will have encountered some barriers, but not only because I'm a woman in business, but just because I'm in business, there are many barriers out there. Um, and basically, I like to think that I am the person I am today because I have been made redundant four times, would you believe? <laughs> and, um, and one of those times was... Um, I'd been off on maternity leave for 12 months, six months unpaid, six months paid. And, um, and I walked back to find my, the cables to my computer were unplugged to my shock. And, um, and I was sort of trying to sort of fix it. I'm no IT expert. Um, <coughs> and, um, and what happened was I was called, uh, called by the then MD into the boardroom and I thought it was like a welcome back chat, a welcome back to work interview. <laughs> um, and it wasn't, I was made redundant. So as any woman who's been on maternity leave and come back into the workplace, you'll know exactly how that feels because you psych yourself up so much for that experience. Um, but there again, I'm not sure if that's just because I'm a woman in business and I've been on maternity leave or was the position being made redundant. Anyway, because as they say, and I did go into... Uh, into the uh, consultation um, that they told me that it was the position which was being made redundant and obviously not me as an individual, as any good organisation would say, by the way. <laughs> um, also, my father died of cancer when I was 20 and I think that really did have an impact on me as a person in business because means, as he called me, it was always about me being positive and basically the fact that I could do anything that I wanted to do um, needless of anyone saying that I couldn't, especially my mum, because she was the biggest person who'd say, oh, no, think about this, have a think about this, don't, don't rush into decisions. Whereas now I'm in my own business, um, I do tend to make quite snap decisions and just go with it, and it's gut instinct, as a lot of people in business would, would know. Um, so have I felt any discrimination against me as a woman in, in particular in my instances? <laughs> I can't say there was any sort of big um, eureka moment that I could describe to you. I'd love to tell you a really interesting nitty-gritty story and that you'd all find really interesting, but that's not the case. Um, but many of you might find this similar situation, whereas I'd go to um, a presentation with a male counterpart and I was officially sort of higher up the food chain, as you might say, than them. And you'd find that the other person would speak to them and not directly to you. But the way that I'd handle that is just by being myself and coming across. And when you know your own business and you know what you're talking about, 
people start, ooh, there's something to this. But whether we can get across that first impressions thing is another, you know, is another thing altogether. Um, and also, when I started in business, which is quite a while ago now, um, you'd go to a lot of these business-to-business -business events, ex exhibitions, etc., and you'd be one of only, I'd be one of only two or three women in North Wales going to these events. The, to somebody might remember the Tomorrow's Wales exhibition, which used to be at Venue Cymru before Spotlight, um, and there were very few women there. And, you know, you, you had to talk to men, you didn't have the choice, you know, you were just going up to people and chatting to them. And I think that's probably where I've, where I'd like to think where my sort of, where I've, how far I've come in business is because I am able to talk to anybody of any age, of any sex, at any time, because of that experience. And I think a lot of things nowadays, people are talking about these ladies only networking, these ladies only groups, ladies lunches and things like that. And by personally, for me, by bringing in an element of segregation where it's ladies only, I personally think that that isn't the way forward. I do think we need to integrate more. That's my view. <laughs> um, um, I'd like to think that there is help there out for people. And obviously, I don't think there is anyone from Quarateg here today. Um, but those of you who know what Quarateg is, there is um, up to level three ILM funding available, completely free courses. But level three is equivalent to a GCSE A level. Now, I'm degree qualified. I think probably most people are who are leaving colleges nowadays. You know, and I think something needs to be done where we address the balance and offer some higher level ILM qualifications to help business women um, to get to those higher you know, paid positions. Because if we want to be, um, you know, if we want more than, I think it's two women um, in the senior positions in the top 50 companies in Wales, if we want more than that, then we're going to have to invest time and money into women in, in the UK. So we are business women in Wales, and let's be proud to say so. So good luck with your career progression, and thanks for listening. Thank you. Diolch yn fawr iawn i Nina. Mi drwn i nesa at Margaret Lloyd-Jones, Cadeiri Federasiwn Sefydliadau'r Merched yng Nghymru. Dau Margaret o Benryn Llun, ac ni ymunodd hi a sefydliad y merched yn aberrerch yn 1970, ac yn 1980 mi ddoeth hi'n ysgrifennu sirol dros Sir Garnarfon. Mi ddoeth hi'n gadeirydd y Sir yn 2005, a dod yn gadeirydd Cymru yn 2009. Mae hefyd yn eistedd ar fwrdd ymryddiriadolwyr cenedlaethol sefydliad y merched yn Llundem, gyda phwyslais ar edrych ar ôl buddiannau Cymru. Mae Margaret hefyd yn gadeirydd ar bwyllgor llywio prosiect Women Reaching Women y Sefydliad. Margaret, gaeth croesawu chithau hefyd i'r anich profiadau. Diolch y fawr iawn i chi. Pnawn da a diolch o galon am y gwahoddiad i gael bod yma hefo chi heddiw yma. Uh, Margaret Lloyd-Jones, fel ydych chi'n dal, dydw i adwyn gadeirydd Federation of Cymru o Sefydliad y Merched. Ac ydw i yn ista ar y pwyllgor yr bwrdd yn Llundan ac yn un o'r ymddiriadolwyr. A pe mae rhywun yn stopio am meddwl am y peth, a'n gofyn, na, dim am dyna fi, dwi'n siarad rhywun, sut yn y byd ydw i wedi cyrraedd y fath safle. Achos wedi'r cwbl aelod cyffredin ydw i yn union fel unrhyw aelod arall allan o'r 210 o mil a throsod sy'n amperthu i'r mudiad drwy Gymru a Lloegr. Pan eisiau adael yr ysgol yr unig goleg i mi fy nychiod, coleg am oedd ddod glyn llifon, achos rhywun, merch ffar am ydw i yn breidiol. Ac wedyn mi fi eisiau'n gweithio yn y labordu yn hefyn fa daearfon ac yn ddiwedd arach mewn swyddfa cyfreithiwr. Dos gynnau ddim gradd na thys ysgrif dysgu nac unrhyw gymwyster arall. Ar ôl priodi, mi smudon i bentre cyfagos ac am ein bod allan yn gweithio dŵr dydd, ond a fawr o gyfle i ddod i nabod pobl y pentre, ond yn fuan wedi gennym blentyn cyntaf dyma mino sefydliad y merched yn y pentre. A mi roedd hyn o rhai cyfle mi ddod i nabod pobl a dyna sut y dechreuodd y cwbl i mi. Mi fedda'r bod yn unig iawn i law ar un symud i ardal newid, da chi'n mynd nabod neb. Mi ddau eisiau nabod pobl y pentre a gwneud ffrindiau, ond hefyd mi'n eisiau ddysgu llaw ar iawn drwy wrando'r sgyrsiau a gwylio ar ddangos fydd yn ein cyfarfodydd bob mis. Ac un peth pwysig iawn i mi ddysgu oedd, nad oedd oed yn ffactor bwysig. Mi roedd yna ystod eang o oedran rhwng yr aelodau, 
Ond doedd hynny ddim yn ei dim gwahaniaeth o gwbl. Pe mae pobl yn gweithio fo'i gilydd ac yn mwynhau, tyda chi mae'n meddwl am yr oedran gwahanol. Ac os rhywbeth mae'n bwysig cael yr oedran gwahanol yma, achos mae gan y to hun gymaint i'w gynnig a gymaint o brofiadau i'w rhannu, ac mi fydd ar y to iau ddysgu gymaint oedd i wrthyn o hefyd. Ac un peth pwysig arall i gofio mewn mudiad ydy i fod o'n anenwadol ac yn amholitikaeth ac yn agored i bob merch. Felly mi'n rydda ni gyd yn gyfartal ac i gyd yn cael yr un cyfleon. Fel am hob mudiad arall, mae rhywun yn siŵr o gael job. A mi geis un na fy hun yn edrych ar ôl y clwb cynilo. A daeth y gwir, fedwn i ddim deud na, achos coelwch neu beidio, mi'n rhoi ni'n swyn ac y ddistaw iawn amser honno. Ond unwaith ydych chi wedi cychwyn ar yr ysgol yma, mi'n ydych chi wedi yn dechrau dringo. Ond mae'n rhaid i chi chynnan fod yn barod i ymgymeryd ar daith yna i fyny'r ysgol. Yn aml iawn, mae rhywun yn meddwl, eh, fedra i'n gwneud hwnna, a ddech chi angen dipyn o bryswadio o gan ffrindia. Ond unwaith mae rhywun wedi cymeryd y cam yna, mae bob amser rhywun wrth law i helpu, ac felly mae rhywun yn dringo niwch i fyny'r ysgol dŵr amser. Fel mae rhywun yn symud ymlaen, mae rhywun hefyd yn magu hydar, a'r hydar yna sydd wedi am yn gyrru ni'n bellach. Yn sefydliad y merched, mae strwythyr mae gynnal ni dau i'r lefel, yn gyntaf mae gynnal chi'r sefydliadau lleol hefo cyfarfodydd misol os gyrsia ac arddangos feidd. Yn yr ail lefel, ydy'r sir neu'r ffederasiwn, sydd yn edrych ar ôl y sefydliadau ac hefyd yn trefnu gweithgareddau dros barthiadau cymlaen er bydd yr aelodau. Ac yn fan o hefyd, mi'n dechrau yn cael cyflau gyfarfod aelodau eraill o wahanol ran o'ch sir chi, a mae rhywun yn naturiol yn gwneud ffrindiau drwy hynny. A wedi mae gynnwch i'r trydu lefel sef y Ffederasiwn Genedlaethol, sydd yn trefnu'r gweithgareddau mawr Genedlaethol, a ma gynnwch i'n swyddfa yng Nghaerdydd, sydd yn gwbl ddwyieithog, a sydd yn gweithio o dan swyddfa Llundan mewn ffordd, sydd fan o ma'r pencadlys, ond ma gynnwch i'n Cymru, ma gynnwch i'n gweithgareddau yn hunan hefyd. Ac ar hwn i'n siarad efo Mari gynna, ac o'n i'n deud, mae o yn y cyfansoddiad ers y 20 cynnar, da ni'n tynnu am yn camlwyddiant yn oddi yn wan. Ac yn y 20, mi rowd o'n y cyfansoddiad bod rhaid i cadeirydd Cymru fod yn fedru siarad Cymraeg. A mae hynny ddim yn mynd i pino syndod i lawer o bobl, pe mae nhw'n deall hynny. Ond mae o'r rhai cyfle hefyd bod ni'n neud yn siŵr, bod ni'n edrych ar ôl byddiannau Cymru drwy'r gydol, bob dim sy'n mynd ymlaen drwy'r sefydliad. Yn ogystal â'r tri, tair lefol yna, mae gyda coleg, mae gyda mudiad goleg hefyd, sef coleg dynman sydd gerdd i dychyn, a mae hwnnw yn cynnig cyrsia ar bob pwnc dan hael, a mae yna gorad i unrhyw aelod i mynychu. Ar adfa sydol ac ar dynman, dwi wedi cael cyfle wneud cyrsia mewn cyfrifiaduron, desktop publishing, powerpoint, ffotograffiaeth digidol, siarad cyhoeddus, yn ogystal â coginio trefnu'r blodau ac yn ddiweddar iawn mynd i chi wneud cwrs ar gemwaith arian oedd yn ddifyr dros ben. Ond tybed fyswn ni wedi mynd i'r cyrsia yma mewn, co mewn coleg lleol. Efallai ddim, achos mae hynny'n medru bod yn brofiad ei than oedd i lawer un. Ond os ydych chi'n mynd i gyrsia drwy'r mudiad, yna ydych chi'n gwybod bod chi'n ymuno â grŵp o fer ferched o'r un feddylfri ydych chi, a ydych chi'n siŵr o daro ar rhywun efo rhyw gysylltiad, a ydych chi'n teimlo, os lecw, mae rhywun yn teimlo yn saff yno. Fi dwi wedi cael y cyfleon, a dwi wedi cymeryd nhw, a thrwy hynny nid yn unig dwi wedi dysgu ac ennill gwybodaeth, <coughs> ond mae'r gwybodaeth honno hefyd wedi ehangu fy ngorwylio ni. Mi rhyw dwi wedi dringo ni uwch ar yr ysgol. A mae'r sgiliau newydd yn bethau dwi fedru ddefnyddio yn fy mywyd bob dydd yn ogystal ac o fewn y teulu a hefyd o fewn y gymuned. Rhagom chi fel nad ydyn ni'n gwneud un byd o mynd ar gyrsia, mi rydda ni hefyd yn ymlacio ac yn cymeryd rhan mewn chwaraeon a gweithgareddau eraill. Rhan bwysig arall i ni yn y mudiad ydy materiam cyhoeddus, ble rydda ni'n gweithio i geisio gwella bywydau neu loda a'n cymunedau drwy ymgyrchu ar wahanol benderfyniadau. Er enghraifft, dan ni wedi bod yn gweithio yn y blynydd o dwythiau mae'r prisiau teg i'r ffermwyr a mill, ffermwyr am ei llefrith, labeli bwyd, cynnal ein gwasanaeth llwrgellodd ac eleni yn hymgyrch ydy gynyddu yn nifer o fod wragedd. Ac er yn bod ni'n gweithio yn genedlaethol ar y penderfyniadau yma, mae'r rhan helaeth o'r gwaith yn cael ei wneud gan yr aelodau hunain ar lawr gwlad, ac mae'r gwaith yma'n rhoi bod had mawr i ni a dwi'n dysgu rhywbeth newydd drwy'r amser. 
Fel rhan o'r swydd o'r cadeirydd, mi fydd e'n cadeirio'r pwyllgor o'r enw merched yn gwneud gwahaniaeth yng Nghaer Dydd, fel oedd Marin Son. Ac mae'r prosiect uh, gan y mudiad fyddan ni'n sôn amdano fo um, ydy merched yn gwneud gwahaniaeth. Ac yn hwnnw, um, da ni'n rhoi cyfra i ferched gymryd y camau cyntaf i fywyd cyhoeddus, maen nhw'n ferched o bob tras a chefndir ethnig a heb ddim cymwysteraf ysgol. Ond drwy gymryd hyn yn y prosiect, maen nhw'n cael yr hyder i gymryd y camau cyntaf. A coelwch fi, mae'r rhain yn gamau mawr iawn iddyn nhw. Sydd yn gwneud cymaint o wahaniaeth, dim yn unig iddyn nhw fel unigolion, ond i'w teuluoedd nhw hefyd. A dyna ni eto'n sôn am fagu hyder ar effaith mawr mae yn gael ar y dyfodol nhw. A drwy'r prosiect yma, mi'n eisiau na hefyd cyfarfod y merched o Libia Jordan, ac mi roedd yn gwbl ysbryd o lethig i cyfarfod nhw. Mae'n rhaid i mi gyfarfa mod i wedi bod yn lwcus ti hwnt, dwi wedi cymeryd y cymleon, ac wedi cael yr anogaeth i fynd ymlaen ac wedi cael cefnogaeth gan o'r aelodau ar hyd y daith, ond tydiodd ddim yn gweithio fel â bob tro. Mae'n anodd weithiau gael pobl i dderbyn yr her o gymeryd swydd, a dyna lle mae'n waith i fel ymgynghorydd yn dod i mewn i geisio dwy'n perswad, ac i geisio dangos cymaint mwy y gan twythau allan o fod yn aelod. Mae'n ddigon yn gwir mae'r mwyaf yr hwch i mewn i'r rhywbeth yna mwyaf byd y gewch i allan o honno fo. Dwi hi'n sicr wedi cael cymaint allan o sefydliad y merched, mae di agor cymaint o ddrysau, dwi wedi cael mynd i wahanol lefydd, dwi wedi cael mynychu cyfarfodydd a digwyddiadau, cyfarfod pobl a chael cymaint o brofiadau na fyswn ni wedi ddychmygu. Fydra i ddim ond diolch am bob peth, a'r cyfan i gyd am mod i wedi deud ia yr holl llynyfodd na'n ôl. Diolch y fawr iawn i chi gyd am rando. Diolch yn fawr, Margaret. Ac ein ola, wadd yr athro Dr. Helen James, dirprwyf is-ganghellor ac athro mewn ehangu cyfranogiad a chyfiawnder cymdeithasol ym Mhrif Ysgol Glyndŵr. Ma Helen yn gadeirydd gwyddoniaeth gogledd Cymru yr elusen sy'n gweithredu Technicwest Glyndŵr. Hi hefyd yw cadeirydd gwyl gwyddoniaeth Rexan. A mi sylfaenodd Helen rwydwaith merched yma ys gwyddoniaeth a thechnoleg yn Sussex ac mi enillodd wobr Cymrau Syflwyddyn 2005 am ei gwaith yn y maes hwnnw. Helen, gaeth croesawu chithau hefyd i rannu eich pryfiadau fel menyw mewn bywyd cyhoeddus. Thank you very much, Mary. And thank you all very much for inviting me today. It's a real, real pleasure. Really unique experience for me to talk to a group of women because my life is really surrounded by fellas most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and forget the, forget the title, Professor Doctor. Um, my background, I left school at 16 with the CSEs. I don't know if you heard the news this morning. Um, those of you that are not clever enough to do GCSEs, you, you can go on the vocational route and do CSEs. Well, that was my, that was my route, and I'm very grateful to that route, actually. Um, so I'm just going to touch on a few things for you about, I guess, why I'm where I am now, how I got there, and... Some of the challenges, whether they're barriers, I guess some of them were barriers that I've, that I've had to overcome, just to share with you, and then very happy to uh, explore any questions or anything afterwards. Quite selfishly, I guess, why I am where I am <coughs> is very much about a drive not to be dependent on anybody um, and be at the whim of anybody else's decisions. So I wanted to be in control, very much so. Um, I needed to be, or wanted to be, financially independent and basically have self-means. I always thought, I guess, if I'm looking around at the various managers and people that I'd worked with, I thought, well, I could probably do your job. And in a way, that kind of moved me to then go for promotion after promotion. It wasn't a particular career aspiration to be where I am. I've found to be where I am. And my career has kind of taken a number of different routes to, to get here. I also have a very low boredom and familiarity threshold, so I tend not to be doing the same thing for all that very long, which again explains why I've had quite a number of different jobs in very different types of organisations. Secondly, engineering was quite a natural choice for me, probably quite strangely for, for most people to think of that. But um, again, rationally, it's very much a male profession, so I knew that the salaries within engineering were probably going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I knew that if I went into engineering and stuck with it, that I could be self um, and, and look after myself. I also knew that, again, male profession, good, strong, sound training and education that's provided by employers. So I did a full apprenticeship, completely paid by the employer, and I did my vocational qualifications alongside that. Didn't intend going to university at all, um, but ended up I did, I did go to the university. Um, and also, luckily, I enjoyed and was pretty good at the maths and physics. So in many ways, although engineering might seem quite a bizarre choice for me, actually it was quite a natural choice for me. And then I moved into lecturing and got involved with further education and higher education. And I guess there were a number of inf influences on that. One, there's absolutely no doubt that at some stage I thought probably education is more conducive to women having a family than perhaps staying in an engineering male-dominated discipline. Did fancy lecturing and always quite fancied it when I was, even when I was a student. And, and I didn't want to be contributing to increasing the bottom line of a commercial company. I actually wanted to be doing something that was of public value and education seemed to be, uh, seemed to be the right thing. And then the third issue really, when I, it, before Glyndor was Glyndor University, it was actually called Newey North East Wales Institute of Higher Education. And at the time I was working at Brighton University on the South Coast. And I, I've always enjoyed business development and turning around organisations and no doubt Newey um, was in a pretty poor state back in 2001 and I was one of the management team that was brought in from a number of different universities to turn it round um, and I'm thrilled to be able to say now that we've kind of doubled, double turnover, significantly improved reputation, we're a full-blown university operating internationally and globally. In terms of barriers, um, the predominantly, I guess, within the education sector, which is probably, again, strange, rather than in engineering, but there were a couple within engineering. And the first, the first issue really was about challenging stereotype views of teachers and careers advisors. And if I think about the decision that I took, and it was very much my decision, I researched it, I decided to do it, I, don't, I can't really recall very many supportive teachers or careers advisors. Most of them were saying, what on earth do you want to do that for? It really was not something that I should be doing. I should have been going to sixth form and doing, um, and doing A-levels. And there's two prejudices there, really, I think. One, one is to do with if you are quite high achieving, and although I, got C, although I did my CSEs, I, I got a suite of grade one, so ultimately within the school I was high achieving. And therefore there was an expectation that I should do academic routes and not vocational routes. And the other prejudice really is to do with a woman going into engineering. And, and at that time, the shipyard where I did my apprenticeship had not taken any women mechanical engineering apprentices. So I was the there was four of us taken on in that year, and we were the first four ever to be taken on. My mum thought I was absolutely balmy um, and just couldn't get her head around it because as a child I hated being dirty even. So it just didn't kind of link with, didn't link with her at all. Um, my dad thought I was absolutely bonkers and quite aggressively, not, not aggressive bullying, but but, but certainly not supportive. And then together with a number of other things, uh, we ended up not speaking for about 25 years. And, and although I kind of jest about it, it was actually quite a, a strong motivator and push for me to ensure that I remained successful all the way through my, all the way through my career. In a sense, I didn't want to let anybody down and show that my, my decision probably was not a good decision. I, it wasn't, I've had a fantastic time. Um, a couple of the other barriers, quite practical barriers when I was in the shipyard, because there were no women's toilets. Um, I was building missile launchers and I had to walk probably for about 20 minutes to even to find a, a lady's loo. Um, and and the, other, the other issue was once you get to 18, you're allowed to work overtime and you're allowed to work nights. I wasn't allowed to work nights. Um, I, was, I was eventually allowed to work overtime, but there was no manager on the shift. So it was deemed inappropriate for a, for a girl, um, 18, I can underst I, you know, understand an element of it, um, not to work because there was no manager on the shift. 
And I challenged that. And actually, the unions wouldn't back me because the regulation was in place to protect women during the Second World War, when actually an awful lot of women went into the shipyard to, to work on all the armaments. Um, I'm pleased to say that actually that, that regulation has now changed so that women can work nights, and, lots, and there are lots of women now that work in that shipyard. But unfortunately, it was too late for, it was too late for me. But nevertheless, I'm pleased that I was able to influence and, and open, the, open the gate for, for women to do that. Because also, don't forget, working nights, you get quite a healthy shift allowance. So again, it was all about that kind of financial means. It wasn't just about I wanted to work nights. Um, and then I went into further education and, and higher education. Probably that's where I've experienced most of the barriers. And not all of them are explicit, obvious barriers. Much more subtle, probably much more dangerous, actually. You can live with a toilet having to walk 20, 20 minutes away. Um, but perhaps not so on some of the others. The worst situation of in Effie, one example, um, and this is probably going back, I don't know, 18, 19 years maybe, <coughs> and uh, I, was, I was for an interview, and I was, this was for mechanical engineering, manufacturing engineering, and I was basically told in an interview that I could not have an affair with a particular male member of staff, and if I did, that it would be me that lost the job and not him. <laughs> um, I did get the job, um, and I didn't have an affair, <laughs> and I was still there. Um, but actually, in HE, um, that was probably where the most serious issues have been. It is quite... Um, en engineering within higher education in particular as well is a very, very male-dominated, very hierarchical, very, very traditional um, an environment. And although my whole life had been kind of around men, because I've got three brothers and my uncle used to live with me, so I'm quite used to, to, to being around chaps. Um, it, was it was still quite interesting. And higher education is very status-oriented, every you know, doctor, professor. And Well, I was little old Helen, and, and um, it didn't kind of mean a, mean a great deal to me. So I'd only been at the university a short while. I didn't have a doctorate. Um, I'd been in industry, and I went on a conference up in Scotland. There wasn't a single other women, woman on this conference. There was probably about 100, 150 all men. So I felt quite inferior, not because I was a woman, but actually because they were all really clever professors and, and, uh, and I wasn't. And um, I won't go into the detail because it's not, it's not appropriate to go into the detail, but it, was a, it, it wasn't a great experience. We had a dinner um, and one senior professor who was actually a significant person at this conference was very, very ignorant. He was just obnoxious. Um, in, in, many, in many things. And what was worse, the other men around, around him actually joined in. Um, and, and actually that was quite thought-provoking for me. It was kind of a, a, a milestone that kind of affects you. And I came back and thought, actually, I don't want any of this. I don't, I'm not going to play this anymore. And I seriously thought about packing it all up. And then I thought, no, I've put all this time, I've put all this effort in. It's probably just one individual. And I stuck with it, but what it did make me do is reflect on gender, feminism, what is the role of women, how are women influencing policy making, how are women getting involved with strategy, implement on, implementation on the ground, influencing the environment, and not just accepting things. So if you think about engineering, men design engineering for men. The, it's the men that are educating, they're designing the curriculum, they're doing the teaching, they're assessing, they're accrediting, they're deciding all the promotion structures, and I thought, I've got to influence this, I've got to do something about it. And that's why I then got much more seriously involved with um, gender and, and women issues more, more generally, to try and change and influence from within, rather than just encouraging girls and women into engineering, which I had done a lot of. It made me think much more deeply and much more... I suppose intellectually about the role the role of women and not just about encouraging but actually doing something about it from the inside I'm conscious of time I'm sorry um, what about how uh, just a couple of points how did I get there sheer bloodied mindedness I think um, I had lots of family belief 
uh, hub hubby and kids fantastically supportive. I take work on holiday, you know, if I've got deadlines to meet, you've got to meet the deadlines. Sorry kids, but, you know, your dad will take you off or, you know, go and play on your own. And there's been massive, massive sacrifices. Um, it would be wrong for me to pretend anything, anything other than that. Um, but they, they've, been, they've been fantastic and I think they actually learn through that process anyway. It's all about what is it like in, in life, isn't it, Eva? We all have to make decisions. So key barriers, I think it's time. I think it, it's about holding your own. I think it's about being true to yourself and not playing other people's games just because that's what it's about. I don't think I've ever taken on, just because I've worked with a load of blokes, it doesn't mean to say that I then... I'm a bloke, although probably I do have more male traits than perhaps female female traits, although I think it has uh, changed a bit. So it is about breaking into policy and actually trying to change from, from within. Lots of other things I could say, <laughs> but, uh, but I won't. But thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Mewn ffyr gwahanol iawn uh, yn y sbrydoliaeth i ni gyd fel menywod uh, sy'n ceisio cynnal gyrfa uh, mewn bywyd cyhoeddus. Cyn agor y llawr, uh, y drafodaeth i'r llawr, um, gael ofyn i'r panelwyr falle y mateb i rhywbeth sy'n wedi cael ei ddeud gan un o'r panelwyr eraill. Oedd na unrhyw brofiadau tebyg uh, oedd eich unig lywed, oedd na rhywbeth yn canu cloch neu oedd na'r bethau'n hollol wahanol. Um, Bysau yna na chi'n hoffi ymateb i rhywbeth adweddwyd gan un o'r panelwyr eraill <coughs> ar y pwlch yma? Well, I, I guess we've all got completely different experiences, yes. haven't mm -hmm. we, and, and very, very different backgrounds. And, and the thing for, for me, I think, that, that hits out is just because you happen to be a, a woman that is also deemed to be successful, um, it doesn't mean to say that they then necessarily become the trailblazers for change internally. Um, certainly I've experienced that where I, I've been in engineering and then there's another woman that's come in. I'd kind of expected her to take up the mantle and she hasn't. And I get really, really, you know, kind of frustrated about that. But actually in a way, why should she? You know, why should we expect her to do it? But I think it is interesting that, you know, e each of us are doing it in our own in our own way, but probably quite differently. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's quite different. You know, you're all sort of in a male-orientated uh, environment, and mine is completely female, so, you know, you can't really compare them. Yeah. So, but I have worked, in, you know, I, I did run a business as well in my other life. I did run a business, so I can see, especially <coughs> from Nina's point of view as well, what it's like to run a business, but that is my, that was my other life. <laughs> Rhiannon and Son, um, my other life. <laughs> uh, <Margaret laughs> not uh, my other life. Um, Jermaine Greer, Mewn, mm. Cavelliad, and in our Wis Pedwar, and did women don't want a career, they want a life. Ag uh, Mahuna and Osodiad Etha, Trawiadol, uh, Aganin, Gachoni Gnoi Kiel, and never. Ois possib to bed Kyle Bowid. A gyrfa, fedrwn i gael o gyd, mae hwnna'n rhywbeth falle y gallai rhywun ymateb iddo fo. Ond beth bynnag, swn so i'n hoffi clywed eich sylwadau chi o'r llawr, uh, unrhyw gwestiynau neu unrhyw sylwadau sydd gynnwch chi yn sgil yr hyn sydd wedi uh, cael i drafod gan yn panelwyr ni. Uh, Gai ofyn i chi uh, wrth ofyn cwestiwn, byddech chi'n barod i gyflwyno chi un o ran eich enw a gyd oedd rhyw syniad i ni o ran pwy ydych chi'n gynrychioli yma os ar bwynt pa faes, pa sector, um, ydych chi yma'r byd addysg neu wleid y ddiaeth neu beth bynnag. Mae yna um, meicroffonau'n dod rownd uh, erdi, ddim yn stafell fawr iawn, ond mi fydd y meicroffons yn help i ni. Pwy hoffai ofyn cwestiwn yn wneud sylwadau? Diolch yn fawr. Ni Evans yn nhw i a dwi'n is cadeirydd awdurdod heddlu Gogledd Cymru. A dwi meddwl fel, fel merch y peth pwysicau fi ydy gwneud gwahaniaeth. A dan ni'n trio'n gor y glas o hyd i wneud gwahaniaeth mawr. 
a dwi'n bod ni'n yn gweithio'n galad i, i wneud hynny. Um, a dwi mewn sefyllfa cwbl unigryw efallai mae heddiw, cwsg mae'n hardner i mae heddiw hefyd, Jenny. A mae'r ddwyn yn ni'n gwbl cystod leol i wneud gwahaniaeth i'n wneud pethau wahanol. Um, dwi'n cael yn ysbrydoli yn clywed am ferched yn wneud pethau da. Um, dwi wedi cael yn ysbrydoli o'r cynulliad o ran gymaint o ferched sy'n ymwneud a, a pethau yng Nghaerdydd. Dwi'n falch bod nhw'n dod allan o Nghaerdydd i weld ni a mae eisiau mwy o cyfleon fel hyn i gael sgwrs ac a siarad. A mae'n bositif dros ben. Diolch yn fawr ni e. Ydych chi wedi dod ar draws unrhyw rwystrau o gwbl? Ydych chi'n sôn bod yna gyfleoedd? Os na rwystrau wedi dod ar draws eich gyrfa chi fel menyw? Y rwystr mwyaf i ydy gwisgo fyny. Dwi yn mynd hi hoff ar gwisgo fyny ma. Dwi yn mynd siwt o fi'n bersonol. Dwi yn person laid back dros pen. Well, you need t-shirts and jeans and jogging pants and the bunner. And doing that, we got an eight and three. He, um, well, do you know my eyes? So now, Dunyon, it's up. Well, Helen, Dunyon's under Headley, and we are. Dunyon's in our route, the doctor. We got a custom living room. Um, do you want to put the nail of this with Lenaf? I believe in a map we don't need to deal with. Gobeithio Carmaint am mis tachwedd, ond pwy o wyr ar ol hynny, chwyl yn rhywbeth arall i wneud. Newid yn rhyw fan arall. Diolch y fawr ni e. Os gan y panelwyr unrhyw sylwadau, rhyw ymateb i yr hyn o'r gen niau ddeud yn fan o ran gwisgo i fyny, ydych chi'n teimlo bod rhaid bod yna bwysa arna chi o ran delwedd fel menyw. Yeah, I, I get enjoy just yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so that's the one thing I'm really proud to be a woman is because I don't have to wear a horrible suit all the time. Mm. I can wear whatever I want. I can wear my matching sh jacket with my matching skirt. Or I can wear a different skirt with a different jacket. And I love it. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> so no pressure at all. No pressure at all, no. Well, I, the, the pressure's on me. And mm. If I want to go casual to an event, I'll go casual. If I want to dress up, I'll dress up. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I personally don't feel any pressure, but maybe that's because I'm running my own business. Mm -hmm. It might be different in a male domination. I think, well, I, th I, think it's ch I think it's changed uh, um, as I've gone through various different jobs. So when I was on the shop floor, mm -hmm. I wore overalls and toe tectors and things, and I was very conscious of... Um, I guess not looking like a, a bloke because I've always had my hair short. Because um, because although I was an apprentice, I, I was still I was a woman, and I, gu I guess I was quite mindful of that. And, and Barrow is a very traditional town, very very masculine. Very you know the girls get married at sixteen, I have kids sixteen seventeen. So in many many ways I was challenging the norm. But that but then as you as you go through. Um, I guess in education, I can get away with um, being much more flexible because I think in higher education, you, you, you do tend to do that. But certainly within, as Pro Vice Chancellor, it would be very, very difficult for me to, well, I just wouldn't, I just couldn't go to work in jeans and t-shirts and things. It, you, you just, you, it's, it's part of that kind of, well, it's, the, it's the, that it's professionalism and, prof it? and presence, isn't it? Which, yeah. yeah, I don't like always playing the game, but sometimes you have to. Yeah. It's the same for me as well because <coughs> you know you do have to keep up to a certain standard and when you do go to a meeting and you've got all the members there they do expect it and I quite enjoy it as well but the, you know the main thing you, you do have to uh, for the sake of the members. It is a shame anyway, though that you yes. to wear it you, you, you do in order to be taken seriously mm -hmm. and to be credible mm -hmm. and have influence mm -hmm. that you dress in a particular way. You know, you, yeah. stupidly, if I was particularly, if I knew I had a very challenging meeting, sometimes I would wear a red suit, you know, because actually it's a bit more powerful and a bit more kind of positioning. Probably wouldn't do it now, but, but certainly there has been that occasion where I have. <laughs> mm. um, Barbara Hughes. Um, my husband worked outside of the farm for 28 and a half years. I think... Being a woman in a man's world, 
I've worked it to my advantage. When I go to auction with cattle or whatever, I would get teased by these men, aggravated. I would turn that to my advantage. I'd go in the box to sell animals and I'd offer a packet of polos with these animals. Great laughter in the ring when I did these silly things. So really, I've worked it to my advantage and I've never felt discriminated ever. Um, they've always accepted me and um, I've had, you know, 35 years, I think I've been at it now, and I've never felt any different really. But as you say, I, I'm in a man's world and I've never felt any different. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. My name is Karen Bellis, and I'm here. Uh, I have two lives: one on the family farm, and one working for an oil company. But my, uh, I just wanted to ask the panel if they noticed in um, the Economist and some of the press this week that um, the reason why women don't make it to the high-level board level in companies and in higher level in public life, because we're too pliant. We won't argue. We're too, we fit in too easily. I don't associate with that at all or identify with it. But I was wondering what the panel thought about that. Is it, is it something you think is a, a too generalistic female trait as portrayed very conveniently by a male journalist in a male read publication? And is the greatest legacy that we could leave the a next generation of women who are confident enough not to need sp support like we're getting today? Beth am asking a question in the or an a female tradesman women in a man's world, but Dr. Helen, do you think it's a bit of a problem? Yeah, in, in, I mean, interestingly, um, all the way through my engineering career, I've, I would say I've never really experienced any um, challenge, any discrimination. In fact, the guys were absolutely brilliant. I just learned so much because they were so generous with sharing their knowledge, sharing, sharing their experience, um, how they got to where they did, um, you know, the, the, the skills of being a, an engineer, the welding, etc. They were just absolutely brilliant. Me, it was actually in education where the I don't know about discrimination, but where stereotypes and challenges um, that that's where the issue was. It wasn't actually within the engineering context at all. Do you think they were supporting you early <coughs> on because they didn't see you as a threat? Oh, I think certainly, and it was all oh, the dear little girl, you yeah. know, but we'll help her along, but who cares? I don't care. I just mopped all that knowledge and mopped all that experience up, and uh, whatever their motives, I couldn't have, uh, you know, I couldn't have cared less. Um, and, and certainly, I think the further you go through the career, you do have, probably, you do interact with, with people differently, but then I think everybody does. Um, because suddenly there's far fewer jobs the higher up you go, and, it, and it's a different ball game altogether, isn't it? Really, for for men and women. As Barbara and so on, I'm a discrimination. My Guahani and my Guahani Ethi from Menuad Adunyan. Helen, the key word is on dipping on honey. Nina, the key word is called proviad, and now or discrimination, my orma. No, no, I'd say I have. <laughs> I mean, I've worked. I work for printers, um, and they are male orientated, mm -hmm. and there generally would be only one toilet as well. Although <laughs> this is not that long ago, mm. um, and they're they're not the most pleasant of places. Let's just put it like that. Yeah. Um, so you you make do, <laughs> um, but it's a needs must thing. You know, you I I could have got another job. I didn't have to stay there. Mm. But I wanted to, you know, I was passionate about what I was doing. So as anyone in business, you make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I was willing to, to make. Yeah. 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 Well, in business, of course, I came across uh, both male and female. Obviously, through the WI, it's just female. But I've been through it when I was in business. 
but even as WI chairman, I was invited last year to speak at the NIAS, which is Adult Education Conference at, at their AGM in London, and to represent the WI. And I must say, I was the only, the, the only woman speaker there, and the respect that I got that day and from people who are really the top of their profession, and I was quite surprised, because it was rather daunting going there in the first place, but I was pleasantly surprised. And um, so, you know, I haven't come across mm -hmm. discrimination, but. Do you mind if I just add, add one other thing? It's really interesting, because probably women can be really cruel. <laughs> Yes. You know, and and actually, and actually, we there was um, an office block where in in the shipyard, um, and the, the loo that we had to, I had to use was in this particular office block, and the women in that office block all got together and complained about me using that loo because I had overalls mm -hmm. and toe tectors on. Um, she's on the shop floor. She shouldn't be. She shouldn't be coming into this office office block and using the loo. So I think it's wrong. I don't think we should only think that actually that discrimination and negativity occurs within, you know, the, the, the male aspect. Actually, women can be really cruel as well. I, lo I love the comment about the um, com non-compliance and challenge, because I think if you ask any of my colleagues, they wouldn't recognise that in me. <laughs> <laughs> they would think I am argumentative and challenging. <coughs> Hi, um, my name's Pam Luckock and I've recently retired about five months ago, I think, from a position in the NHS where I'd worked for 40 years. Um, and I worked, I had a, the privilege of working for the NHS Centre for Equality and Human Rights for the past six years of my working life. Um, and, and it's a question, I think, to the room, because I, I've really enjoyed all of the, and I do this when I come into a room of women, I always enjoy it. I love the diversity and hearing all the different perspectives and, and stories. But the, the big question for me always, and for myself, is if there are no barriers, if there's not a problem, where are all the women in all the power positions in Wales, in the UK? Why, why are, not, are not all the able, very able, competent women that I know not being represented in, in the proportions that we exist mm. in the positions, not just the powerful positions, but all of our public bodies where we have a right to be well represented and we're not, that's the fact. So I think when you talk about individual experiences, we can all give a different perspective. Mm. We've either experienced discrimination or we haven't. But there's something else going on here. It's not just about the individual experience, it's about mm. what's happening on, on the much broader level socially. And I haven't got any answers. I, mm. uh, I lost energy. I, I retired early because it was just a really hard job to do, not just for women, but across all of the equality di um, dimensions some real challenges in our society and we haven't got the answers yet. Mm. It, I think these, it, it, these, these debates need to be at a really serious level much more often. It's great. Mm. I think we ought to be having them with lots more men in the room and lots, you know, lots more of everybody in the room. Mm. Um, but it's a question about, it, you know, if there are no barriers, why? Mm. Why, do, why have we got what we've got? Dechavaur, Pamela. Mae gymaith i'n cwestiwn arall tra mae'r penelwyr yn, yn cysidr ateb i hwnna. If there are no barriers, where are all the women? Y gai gymaith i'n cwestiwn o'r or bwrdd yn y clefn os gwelwch yda. Um, Simani Roy, I'm the chair, director and chair of North Wales Association for Multicultural Integration. It's a big name, but in short, it's Noami. Well, to answer to the lady, not really answer, it's a comment to you. I'm sorry, I couldn't get your name. I, this morning I attended a uh, meeting in uh, Glanquid Hospital. It's an ethics group. There are 10, ten attendees. Out of 10, only two were men and eight, me, eight women. So it's uh, not that very a lot of women are not there, women are there. And another thing, I come from India, originate from India. Uh, we had a uh, female prime minister. I'm living in UK. We had a female prime minister, so it's not that um, actually barrier. It's a path is open to women if we can make it. And India, in all field of life, 
women are there on the top position. One of the reasons, because they continue with their career, uh, uh, they do not take uh, long maternity leave. They do not have long break because basically they come from extended family. They have people in laws um, to look after their babies, so they do not take long leave. And here it's a bit difficult in this country, a bit different in this country. Many, many women, they take long leave and they don't come back to their career. And that, that is a break for the career. That is one of the reasons, possibly, I do, I'm not sure, 100% possibly, it is <coughs> one of the causes why women, many women are not in, not in the top position. That's my comment. Thank you point arall bana felly uh, wedi wedyneid uh, point pwysig o ran maternity leave um, yn yr India mae'n amlwg bod yr maternity leave dipyn yn fyrrach na'r maternity leave uh, rydyn ni'n i gymryd yn y wlad yma. Y mae'n swnio yn ôl beth oedd chi'n ddweud hefyd wedi bod yna fwy ofal, teuluol uh, bod y teulu uh, yn cynnal uh, i gilydd. Lle mae yn wir i ddeud falle bod ni fel uh, pobl yn ymrhydain, beth bynnag, yn, yn byw ar wahan i'n tyluoedd, mae yna bobl yn symud. Gai dod at y panel felly, a fwynt uh, diddorol, Pamela, um, oedd yn gweithio i'r NHS. Os ydyn ni'n honni, nad oes na rwystre, lle mae'r merched yma, uh, lle mae nhw ar y daith fyny'r ystol i, i yrfa uh, mewn bywyd cyhoeddus. point isn't it? I did her third game the lot and Helen? Uh, well, I, I, clearly, I think there are barriers. Um, I, 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 I don't think I've ever thought that there weren't, there weren't barriers, but the barriers are different in different careers and in different sectors, um, doing, very different, doing very different roles. So I, I, think, I think there are. And I think, you know, whether it's about entering a particular career, if I think about engineering, I think as many boys are put off doing engineering as girls are put off doing engineering because it has a particular stereotype and until those things are challenged and show and I know a lot a huge amount of work now goes on in terms of public understanding of science and engineering um, to help people see that actually engineering isn't about some of the things I worked on heaven forbid things like missile launches but it's actually chairs, tables, microphones, you know, all the day-to-day -day technologies that we, that we operate in. And promotions are, in, the, in most cases, the policies are designed by men. And, and it's not because they're trying to exclude women, it's just that they are not inclusively thinking about the, the broader range of criteria. Um, and I think there's a huge amount of work to do, and that's why it's important. And I think women at, at all levels do have, if they can take that responsibility, do have a responsibility to change from within and not think, well, it's okay, I don't need to do something because Frida over there is going to do it or Julie over there is going to do it. I think we do have to influence as much as we can within our own sectors. Ydy hwnna nateb rhywfaint o'r cwestiwn chi? Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch yn dda, Alice. Diolch yn y bwrdd yn y pen draw, ysgwch Mae rhan y hylithaf o gyfarfodu yw dwi'n dwi'n eistaf yn nhw. Ond sy'n dwi'n rioed ydy meddwl bod yr heria, mae yna heria nhw'n ebu rwy'n ynddyddiol yn y math yma swydd, ddim gwahanol i mi achos mod i'n ferch, nag ydyn nhw i unrhyw un arall. A felly beth yma'r ferol dwi wedi gorau ddysgu felly, fel ymddangos nad oes gen i ddim ofn pan dwi'n gwisgo het scalad a dringo i ben ystol, a felly yma'r rwy'n gallu gorau esgyn. 
Ond dwi'n meddwl, eithaf, um, mae'r cyswllt rhwng beod Margaret yn ei ddeud a beod Helen yn ei ddeud yn glir iawn. Eithaf, ddau gydestun gwahanol iawn ar y wyneb. Ond dwi'n meddwl, beth sy'n bod yn bwysig iawn i mi? Ydy'r elfen gymunedol, yr elfen yma gorau'r rhywun, a'r cyfleoed mae'r rhywun yn gael yn ifanc. A'r math o bobl, merched cryf iawn, pan dwi'n meddwl yn ôl i gyfnod yma gorau'r rhywun 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 yn ôl Mae o'n yn cawod sydd o lanwedd ac yn cyfrannu at yr hyder, a dwi'n meddwl bod ni'n dod yn ôl, ant beth pwysig iawn y fanar, rhoi dy cyfleoedd. Ella, ddim yn angen rheidiol o fewn byd gwaith, ond o fewn y gymuned hefyd. Diolch yn fawr, Gwenon. Os a gwestiwn arall cyn bod fi yn gofyn i'r panelwyr, y mateb i'r elfen gymunedol, bod hwnnw yn elfen bwysig wrth i fenywod chwilio myrfa. Alo, mae'r wena edw, ys eto cyngor gwynedd, a fel Gwenon yn bennaeth adran yn y cyngor, Dwi'n rhedeg gwasanaethau gofal a hamdden, felly dipyn o ferchau i'r sgynau yn yr adran. Ond pig o pwynt gwenan a mynd efo ymhellach, a dwi'n meddwl, y pwynt ma o rhydder yn y ni ferchau, dwi'n meddwl, sy'n yngreiddiol i hwn. A dwi'n meddwl yn ôl i dipyn o'n heili fi naw ben lle na nai, na ballu yn rhedeg busnes laeth, a mam wastad wedi gweithio anhad, a swn ni'n mynd gof deud, fo'n rhwng y pedwar wal mae hyn, dwi'n meddwl bod dad yn eithaf sexist yn ffordd bach ei hun. Ond fi dod oth a fi reit o'r cychwyn, mae rhaid i'ch chdi'n ei siŵr, bach chdi'n medru cadw dy hun, mae'r wyna. Pae da bod yn ddibynnol ar ddynion, achos mae eisiau chdi'n ei siŵr, bach chdi'n medru cynnal dy deulu, bod bynnag y ddaw. A dwi'n meddwl, roedd yr cyngor yna i fi nifanc, ifanc iawn, bod y mywyd i fy ni fi, mewn ffordd. Ac dwi'n gobeithio mae gennau ddwy o genod, maen nhw'n gweld fi'n gweithio ac yn troi fy nyn y cyngor a gweithio'n hwyr a mynd â gwaith adra. Ond yn mwynhau, a mae'n debyg, be dwi'n gobeithio, dwi'n neud iddyn nhw ac i'r merched sy'n gweithio i fi, a di roed yr hyder i ddyn nwtha hefyd, symud yn ei blyn a ochi chi'n mynd am brofiadau gwahanol, a cael yr hyder yn ei hunan mewn ffordd. Dwi'n mynd siŵr da ni wedi cyrraedd o. Dwi'n meddwl maen nhw'n ddipyn o ferched sydd yn methu yr hyder na am rhyw reswm mae'n debyg yn ei magwraeth. Mae'r aid ni sbi ar ysgolion, fe da ni ddeud, ddeud wrth genod. Um, Sicr geisio brofiadau anffodus yn yr ysgol o ran um, gyrfa oedd. Gofyn ni'n eistedd yn y cefn, achos doedd y moch, achos oedd ni'n mynd i'n cael plant, felly oedd ni'n cael uh, lliwio, neu beth bynnag oedd o'n disgwyl ni'n wneud yn cefn y dosbarth. Ond am bod gynnau'r cefnogaeth teuluol, dwi'n meddwl bod fi wedi medru goresgyn hynny, ond mae'n nifer o genod sydd ddim mae'n amlwg. A jyst i orffan, mae'n debyg y ngwri yn y byd addysg, a mae o'n dod adran nifer o weithiau'n deud pan mae'n aswydd pennaeth y mynd. Na barn y staff ydy sawelgyn yn nhw'n sardyn yn cael y swydd, dim y ferch, a'r merched yn deud hynny. So dwi'n meddwl, o ran yn hunan weithiau, dwi'n meddwl bod ni'n fwy o rwystyr i ni'n hunan, na weithiau mae dynnu o'n... Ond dwi'n gosgynnau gwestiwn, ond mewn ffordd, ella gofyn i'r panel, o be fe dyna ni'n neud fel merched i newid hyder yn y genod sy'n dod rŵr system o oed ifanc iawn. Diolch fawr. Diolch fawr i'r ddwy ohonoch chi yn trafod yr un pynciau i bob pwrpas Gwenan yn sôn am yr elfen gymunedol, a mor Wenan sôn am eiriau sy'n wedi codi dipyn heddiw, sef hyder ac anogaeth a hithau hefyd fel Gwenan yn sôn am yr elfen deuluol. Um, Gaiach sylwadau chi os gwelwch y ddau, mae yna ambell un o'n chi wedi sôn am dylanwad y teulu arna chi. Helen yn sôn am uh, eich tad, uh, a bod chi mewn ffordd oherwydd falle nad oedd o yn positif iawn, uh, yn um, benderfynol o brofi i chi un, ac weithiau falle. Um, Mae diffyg anogaeth weithiau yn gallu bod yn hwb hefyd yn ogystal ag anogaeth. Gaiach sylwadau chi ar, ar y tri ffeith yna, yr elfen gymunedol, yr elfen deuluol, a'r anogaeth uh, ag ewch chi gan deuluoedd neu sydd ddim yn cael ei roed gan deuluoedd. I fod yn onast, dwi'n meddwl, dim yn heili agos agos fel fyrch hynny rwan, ond dwi'n gwybod i oedd na deulu Dwi'n bach pellach a gof heini bod amser o fedd ar hyn gwneud hynna. A dwi'n meddwl bod hynny wedi gwneud i fwy penderfynol i wedi gwneud dechrau busnes efallai gyda nhw oedd yn llwyr yn erbyn. Ac 
Mae'r person yn dweud mwy siŵr yn benderfynol, y modd i mynd i lwyddo ac eto fel yn mynd dweud efo sefydliad y merched wedi cymryd y cyfleoedd wedi gael ddweud, os ydych chi eisiau cael mynd yn eich blaen, dowch chi'n mynd o sefydliad y merched. Plyg da iawn yma. Wel, o'n eisiau colli hwnna. Nina. Ie, mae'r ffordd yn ddim yn ddim yn ddim yn ddim. Um, and I think my mum, and I think a lot of women have this where they've got that protective quality. So they want you to do well, but they want you to do it very slowly and carefully. And it's, you know, it's proven in studies where women take five times as long to set up a business than men. You know, men can have a well-established business in a year where it can take women five years. So things happen a lot quicker because mm. we tend to be more cautious. And, mm. and um, like for instance with myself, I didn't have any capital investment. I started off, you know, um, without, but a lot of men would have gone for the capital investment, gone big, gone big quicker, potentially, you know, so, but you have to go with what feels comfortable with you, and um, I think with regards to the community aspect, um, having set up the, the not-for-profit networks and worked for North Wales Women's Network as a director, um, for me, it was important to make sure that every voice is heard on a committee when you're chairing a committee mm. and to make sure that everyone's point is heard because there are people who are louder than others and more outspoken mm. than others and, and this sort of thing and it's important to have people in positions that help to encourage the people who are more softly spoken or mm. um, you know as Margaret was saying the people who you know she wouldn't have necessarily have put herself forward for, mm. for a key mm. role um, mm. but you know being asked to it you, you went for it mm. so I think um, I think for any women who's in a, in a position of any sort of power to encourage those other women to come. I mean, the stories we've heard here is there are a lot of w women out there who are, you know, who are encouraging men to mm. get positions above them because they're, for whatever reason, they're frightened of a woman above them. Mm. Now, why is that? If there's something wrong in our, in, our, in our thinking, why wouldn't we want that? I'd want the best person in a job to lead an organisation. Regardless of gender, regardless of gender or anything, you know, that's the best person for the job, isn't it? When you when you when they're interviewing, but there's obviously something in terms of the criteria because why aren't the women, you know, if the women are going for the jobs, I'd be interested to know the sort of proportion of women going for jobs mm. against men and the sort of the winning ratio kind of thing. Mm. I don't know what that would be. Mm. Yeah, quite quite a few little points there, aren't there? Because at, at one level. I mentioned my I mentioned my dad, and actually, but what I didn't say was he he left the household when I was fifteen, and I've got three younger brothers, and my mum didn't work. Well, she did. She actually worked behind a bar, actually. So in term in terms of that situation, the whole family just became really vulnerable. And so as soon as when I got to sixteen, it was a no brainer for me. I needed to go out and and work, and um, that actually. You can have negative and positive motivators and drivers, can't you? And, I, and I, I think it probably wasn't until about another 15 years, 20 years on, that reflecting back, that was a massive motivator for me in why I did what I did, because I would, I did, I would not knowingly put myself in the position of my mum, of having four kids, and suddenly, you know, the chap moves out and you're, and you're kind of stuffed. Um, so that was quite. That was really quite important. Um, family has been important. I was the first in the family to go to university, and so there was no knowledge within the family of what that meant. So you can't come home and talk very much about so what you've been doing at university because it, it's a different world. That the language is completely different. But having said that, they were fantastic, and the, the support and the pride that they had and still have in what I do, they don't understand anything of what I do, but that doesn't matter. They still have that, that, um, that pride and, and, I'm, and I'm very grateful for that. Role models have been really quite influential at certain times in my career. Not role models of women that have been really, really successful, but actually role models that really clever women, um, one was a senior careers advisor, challenging the norms from within the organization and got to know her, we connected, and then we, between us, we developed a number of programs to, to roll out to schools, and uh, we did a couple of international conferences. So they, she, you know, there have been a number of situations where role models have, um, have been quite influential. 
I think if, if I might just also make a, make a comment about why there aren't more women, I think sometimes, you know, women will make positive decisions not to play the game and not to be part of the rat race that actually is defined by the traditional structure of what running a business is. And they say, well, actually, I'll have a certain amount of income for my means. I will engage with, you know, life out of work. I will engage with a, with a profession, but I will have other things. And sometimes that means you will never be vice chancellor or chief exec of a, of a blue chip company because in order to do that, you are living and breathing the job seven days a week probably 18 hours a day. That is the level of commitment that is required. And therefore women perhaps are making positive choices not to engage with that, mm -hmm. but still have a very successful, rewarding career, perhaps at that deputy level, where they can probably have more influence than, than, a vice, than perhaps at a vice chancellor and chief executive level. Just, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, my name's Beth Ann Jennings and I'm here on behalf of the Women's Food and Farming Union today. But I'd like to talk also about my other role. I sit on the board at Liverpool Women's Hospital and we celebrate women's health. But just to flip the coin slightly here today, um, I was in a working group last week and a male midwife was telling us about the challenges that he'd had throughout his career. Mm -hmm. And he actually said that his mother was so embarrassed that he'd chosen to become a midwife that she told everybody for nearly 10 years that he worked for John Lewis yeah. and didn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he'd said, and he wasn't, you know, obviously being a male in a women-dominated area, mm -hmm. it took him a long time. I mean, he's now, he's clinical you know, and he's at the top of his profession, but he's faced a lot of barriers, obviously, with mm. dealing with women. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Mm. Hi. Um, on the personality thing, I'm a, a, a committed uh, lesbian feminist. Um, I've been around quite a while now and um, uh, and been to various uh, women's meetings and um, just an, an observation is that, um, that we, we often have a tendency to get into a, a circle so we uh, assess women's work by comparing it to men and we get into that um, gender circle mm -hmm. and it was just to throw in a, a question in, in relation to difference and that, that um, within gender there's not just ma man, woman, there's, there's transgender as well. But if you open it up into um, further areas and uh, protected characteristics and uh, equality strands, there's all sorts of um, differences and all sorts of struggles within that element, which um, as women in tough situations, we should be able to identify with. So my question is uh, to the panel members, uh, is there anything that they're, they're doing within their work context to um, enable people um, within that different element to um, be confident to be themselves in the workplace. I've been all at Celo Besan and did all the own. I'm a bidur, majority of the time. I'm the last one. I'm a bidur again. The term the camera on there with it's in the dark world. Bidi. Uh, er canran o the neon uh, sydd yn gwneud y gwaith yna. Um, a hen eto dwi'n meddwl yn codi'r pwnc olle mae'r rhwystrau um, yr er fam ac yn swnio fel pe bai gan ddigwilydd o'r ffaith bod i mab i mewn swydd y mae rhywun yn gysylltu efo swydd benyw. Ydy hwnna'n rhywbeth gyda chi wedi dod ar draws fan elwyr uh, yn ystod eich gyrfaoedd? Lle falle bod na ddyn yn gwneud gwaith sydd uh, fel arfer yn gysylltiedig uh, a swydd uh, menyw ac falle bod y person hwnnw wedi dod ar draws rhwystra a gwahaniaethau o fewn i waith. Wel, dyna ni gyd yn mynd i weld gynecologist dyn. Mm. So, beth yw'r gwahaniaeth? Mm. Dod yn ôl y cofyn y cwestiwn, beth yw'r gwahaniaeth mewn ffordd achos mae'r rhan fwyaf gynecologist yn dynion. A dyna ni'n ddi weld nhw ar hyd yr amser tra ma'r yw'n efeichiog a wedyn ar y diwedd. Yn meddwl, o, disgwyl cael bydd dwraig mae'n ffordd dynas 
Ar question to Sagavani and Vana, Osna Rubes, the he bell panel where a new nade and I Achiogi Pobol Sith and Wahanol, Nesith Oran Dean, Dennis Ne, Traus Ruyal, I Unade Pether and House Ari Caverno and the Savle Guais, Babono Dim and Winnebby Ruistre. Well, natural media diverged at the Sweden and Erhead on the Nakorat in Ruverg. Ak, my best in Ruverg at the Nanovish, Dosadim, 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 and now, but in person, if you had merched, may not hide the cover, if you were in the sun, I'm a new kid and covert salon. The Sadin Guahani, I was my merchant, but the return of Pemaru and Arbenihin. So may I eat what Vacker Priot, D. Priot, Guedwan, Ruin, the much bear, Par Padras, Payais, Dimbit, the Mayon Agoradi Baub. Yach Nina, Helen. Yeah, um, well, for me, with the Liquid Business Network, obviously the membership's open to anyone, male, yeah. male or female, um, and we've not actually had any issues at all um, with any problems at any of our events, and we've got 200 each year, so they'd be, uh, they'd be I'm sure I've inferred by now. Um, but definitely in terms of developing confidence, um, I do see part of my role as being the organiser of the network is to engage and, and organise events where the members do take information away with them, so to help them to develop themselves, mm -hmm. to learn new skills and that kind of thing. So it is important for me to build those events in across the year. Mm -hmm. um, but just meeting other business people, if you've not gone out and done any networking or met any other business people before and you're just starting a business, it can be really a daunting process. Mm -hmm. So just having somebody there, you know, who knows your name when mm -hmm. you come in, who <coughs> who welcomes you, who introduces you to people. Yeah. That's what people want. So that's how I see my role. So yeah, yeah. Helen, any yeah. comments? Um, I, gu I guess I've been involved with running um, women in engineering. I set up the Women in Science Engineering Network in Sussex when I worked at the University of Brighton. Um, and that came out of women wanting to, to network it within the engineering field, but also we had teachers and careers advisors and, and lecturers. It was actually men and women. Um, and because what I'm, what I'm also keen to do is not just, I've kind of gone on about engineering, but actually it's, it is broad science engineering technology. Uh, what I want is a diversity of minds and experiences that is influencing the profession. And so that's why I set up the Women in Science Engineering. We, we, we all used, all, also used to have lunches where we invited all the women from across the university. And it was up to them whether they, whether they joined or not. Um, in, whilst I've been in Wrexham, I've done less of that be, simply because of my role. And I've just been absolutely chocker. So I just haven't been able to reflect in the way that I, ha I have had in the past. Having said that, my role as chair of Techniquest Glyndor, I actually set up that company, and that is all about science and technology and young people and families engaging together, helping to inform them about science and technology. And within that, we have programs very specifically for girls, um, and they're engaging with it, with their parents, so working through the girls, but then influencing uh, thinking through the parents as well. So I, I'm active um, in, in a variety of in a variety of levels really Diolch y fawr Os a gwestiwn arall cyn i ni gloi mae'r amser yn, yn dirwyn i benni <coughs> Cwestiwn olaf yn hyn ysgwch y dda um, Diolch um, Helen Ellis uh, dwi'n rheolwr hefo Age Cymru ac um, 
dwi'n meddwl y matsa bydw i lot sbesid i cael ei ddeud um, pnawn ma. Mae deddfwriaeth wedi newid lot dros y blynyddoedd. Uh, gymaint fel bod i yn, yn, yn ystod yng Ngyrfa wedi gweld newidiadau mawr i ferchaid yn arbennig. Ond ni'n gweithio fel swyddog rhambarth i elusen yn yr weithdega. Ac uh, yn, yn 1995, mi dri si am swydd cynedlaethol efo elusen. Uh, cynedlaethol felly. Ac yn y cyfweliad, fi a fynwyd i mi fel mam rhiant i dri o blant yn yr ysgol pam o'n eisiau swydd llawn amser. A er blinder mawr i fi'n hun, mi ddim cychwyn i chi atab y cwestiwn a stopio mwy a sydyn a sylw iddo li, be dwi'n neud y fama. A mi ddim di chi nad o'n i'n mynd i atab y cwestiwn yna, dod o ddim yn berthnasol, bod i wedi profi, bod i'n gallu cynnal swydd e, bwysig llawn amser. A dod o'n i'n mynd gweld pam oedd y cwestiwn yn cael ei ofyn. A mi gerddi chi allan o'r cyfweliad, a mi oedd fi'n dadra ar rwan i'r gogledd. Ond um, mi gefais i'ch swydd, a dyna pam gefais i'ch swydd. Achos oedd yr aelod yna, oedd wedi gofyn y cwestiwn, wedi, oedd yr aelodau eraill wedi dychryn am ei bywyd, bod oedd wedi gofyn ffasiwn cwestiwn. Oedd os gwrs heddiw, fe sefo byth yn gallu gwneud. Yeah. Ond byr sydd wedi digwydd i mi dros y blynyddoedd, ydy um, mi oedd nodd na boent yn y ngyrfa, lle o'r rhaid i mi wneud penderfyniad, oedd yr y swydd o'n i wneud, wedi lleoli i bob um, ystyr, felly yn gair dydd, ond o'n i'n byw yn y gogledd. A mi ddod y pwynt lle oedd rhaid i mi wneud penderfyniad, os dwi eisiau mynd yn uwch, fi rhaid i mi symud. Achos dwi oedd y cyfleoedd ddim yma ar y pryd. A mi wnes i'r penderfyniad i aros fel bod i'n cael cydbwysa gwaith a, a hamdden, felly a teulu. Ac be ddi gwyddodd wedyn, o'n i'n mynd yn gyffyrddus y cymffyd sôn yn bildio o'ng hwmpas i. A ddiweddar mewn ysblwyddyn, dwi wedi llechio fi'n hyn yn nôl i mewn i'r lle anghyfyrddus yma. A dwi nawr yn ista ar fwrdd elusen cynedlaethol. Y sydd yn delio yr gweithle yn, yn ddynion sydd yn gweithio mewn uniform. A mae'r hawwyd ar pobl sydd ar y bwrdd yr elusen yn aelodda o'r gwasanaeth. Ac mwy a sydyn, dwi'n ffendi o fe'n hun, chdi bach yn intimidate sydd unwaith eto. A da heb sylweddoli bod i yn y cymffyd sôn mae cynt. Wedi mae wedi bod yn dda i mi herio fe'n hun. Ond mae lot i wneud efo magwriaeth a hefyd um, a ysgol bod lleli eis yna hefyd. A mi geis i gyngor gyrfaedd difrifol yn y chwedega yn yr ysgol, oedd yn hwsio fi i, I, I faes merchaid yn unig, felly. Ond, a dyna nes i wneud i chwyn, ond mi nes i symud o'm lain i wneud beth dwi'n wneud rwan, felly. Wedyn, dwi'n meddwl mae mag ei hyder, a pasio'r hyder yn amlaen i'r genhedlaeth nesaf sydd yn bwysig, mae rai yna ni wedi bod yn ffodus di galo gan yn, yn, yn rhieni, Sani Lucas, neu yn neini a teidia, modryb, fe wythyr, pyrr i bynnag. Ond mae'n bwysig bod ni hefyd yn basio fo'n mlaen, a bod ni'n sefyll i fyny dros hawliau merchaid, a gwneud yn siŵr bod pawb yn cael yr un un cyfle. A dyna cwbl sgyn i ddeud, diolch o fawr. Diolch o fawr, Helen. <laughs> o, mae hwnna'n <laughs> sylwadau cael anogl iawn uh, i orffen y sesiwn yma. Unwaith eto, geiriau hyder uh, yn dodallan ynda, um, a dylanwa teulu er mwyn magu'r hyder yna uh, mewn merched i fynd ymlaen uh, i swyddi uh, mewn bywyd cyhoeddus. Um, ac yn ddiddorol iawn, uh, sawl un wedi cyffordd y pwynt uh, am bod y cyngor gyrfa, gyrfa oedd yn yr ysgolion wedi bod yn ddifrifol yn ôl Helen y trydweitha. Um, efallai bod hwnna'n rhywbeth y dylid uh, edrych i fewn iddo fo, a'r sut mae disgyblion yn hysgolion i yn cael cyngor heddiw ar gyfer gwahanol fathau o yrfa oedd. Oes na un o'r panelwyr eisiau gwneud un sylw bach cyn bod ni'n cloi ac yn gofyn i'r llywydd ddod i gloi'r sesiwn. Na, dwi'n meddwl bod mae Helen wedi ddweud tro di crynhoi llawer iawn. <laughs> iawn, diolch Abs- yn fawr. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Diolch yn fawr i'r panelwyr uh, am 
yn sylwadau hynod o ddiddorol, a dwi'n siŵr y byddwn ni'n mynd o yma yn teimlo ballen fwy hyderus ac yn fwy calonogol ac i chwilio am fwy o gyfartaledd i bawb yn ddynion ag yn ferched yn y safle gwaith. Mam ser yn yn herbyn i felly minnau alw ar Rosemary Butler o Sky i gloi gan ddiolch i ddihithau am i chyfraniad i'r seminar yma a dymuno'n dda i ddi ar ei thaith tuag at y gynhadledd ac yn helu'r y mis tachwedd yng Nghaer Dydd. Diolch yn fawr. Well, diolch yn fawr. And um, I think that was quite an exceptional um, session. Um, I think the thing that's coming across and all the sessions is confidence, this business about confidence. Um, and it is quite interesting to see how, if you do a lot of interviewing, as many of us have over the years, a man will apply for a job you can do 50% of, but a woman will only apply for a job she can do 90% of. And that does make, make a big difference. There was a comment today about how it's quite interesting that we've got the women at the top and the men seem to be doing the work today. So thank you very much, guys. I think you've, uh, <laughs> you've done, done a very good job. Um, I think what's thrilling me is we're getting young women coming now who are saying they've had no experience of any discrimination. And I think it's fantastic. We are beginning to achieve. Uh, but as somebody said at one of our previous sessions, should you got to remember you're standing on very broad shoulders from a lot of women that went before. So I think that that's really worth um, listening to. But it's quite interesting to see how um, we've all experienced some kind of uh, family influence. Very strong women has come across today, as also in, in previous sessions. Um, but I had a very supportive family, incredibly supportive. But when my brother took the 11 plus and he passed, I remember we all went on the train to Cardiff, which was a and he went and had, a, a, I remember the colour now, a green rally bike. And he was allowed to go home in the guard's van with this green rally bike. And when I came to take the exam the year after, I passed much higher than he did. And I had half a crown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, when I related that to my mother years later, she was mortified. But then it wasn't important that I did well because mm. I was going to be taken care of. I married below my station in life, you'll be glad to know. Um, um, but it, it, it's really quite interesting how uh, Margaret here from the WI, I have a huge respect for, for women's organisations. Merche de Wild frightened me to death. Um, but certainly WI, Towns Women's Guilds, what they've done in championing uh, women's causes over the years is fantastic. Public transport, science in schools, whole range of things. And I think what they've done is incredible. And I think the membership forms are on the way out, are they not, Margaret? Yes. Um, but um, it's quite interesting because Margaret joined because she didn't know anybody and she, uh, I think, started a savings club. <coughs> and look where you are now. So you have to be very careful what you start doing, girls. Um, because, um, again, Helen started off... Um, on the shop floor, and now she is she is where she is. And we have Nina, who's actually not had any discrimination, but is achieved and is a young young attempt. Not yet, not yet. Uh, <laughs> is is, is a, a very successful businesswoman. But it's great that more and more women are achieving. But uh, the point that was made very succinctly, two members there. One is why are there so few women in positions of influence? And th and that's that's really what we have to be looking at. We are nearly 50%, 51% the population, and it's a huge resource that the nation cannot afford to ignore. I mean, I've had, um, I started off my career in politics, if that's what I'm called, because I was a, a mother with two young children, and I used to go to the park, and there was nowhere for the mothers or fathers. Well, the fathers didn't go to the park then, they went to work, uh, but the mothers, nowhere for us to sit. And I tried desperately to get a bench because sitting on the wet floor or leaning against a swing for hours on end, it's, you know, it, you don't want to go to the park. Um, and I couldn't get this bench. Um, so there was an election. And I decided I would stand not just to get better education and better housing, but I wanted a park in the bench. I mean, a bench in the park. <laughs> and it might have been a park in the I don't know. Um, and the idea was that I would embarrass these other male candidates into getting this bench. But it didn't work like that. I won. <laughs> I got my bench within four weeks, uh, but I'm where I am now. So you have to be careful what you wish for, because you, you end up doing things that you really don't expect to do. But I think the point about um, the male mid-man um, is the fact that he chose to do that. But with women, they tend not to get such a broad um, number of choices. And I think that's what we're about, is to make sure that women do get lots of choices. I've talked to quite a few of you here today for the first time. But talking to you, I'm quite sure 
that between you all, you could not just run Britain and Wales, you could probably run the United Nations without any problem at all, but you wouldn't have the confidence to do it. And that's where we, uh, what we have to look at. I mean, uh, Margaret mentioned about putting a first foot on, on, the, on the rung of the ladder. What I'm going to ask you today is you've all achieved in your own ways, some of you exceptional things, some of you less exceptional, but I want you to remember not to pull the ladder up behind you, to put your hand out to another woman uh, who need, needs some help. They may not realise they need help. Uh, we talked about in India you have a supportive family. Here we don't have that, but you might have a young family next door to you that even you just babysat so that the woman could go to evening class or go out to... Uh, to something would help enormously and make such a difference. And again, if you're in a position of influence, try and make sure that you, you do help other people uh, to come up. We spent a lot of time talking about toilets today, uh, but it is quite interesting because when I was uh, a councillor, I was quite young, and you'd go to a conference, and I never had to, you know, never had to queue for the toilet. Go straight in, no trouble, because they were all men. And they have to queue for the toilet, which is quite, quite unusual. And the other thing I find, I do a lot of conferences, uh, and it is improving hugely, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. You go to a conference, and if it's a sea of grey foul suits, then you know it's a, a conference that's strategic. But if you go to a conference full of women, you know you're about to have a conference where they Im have to implement all the strategies that those guys talked about last week. What I want to do is to make sure we have more women in places where they have influence, and you make the decisions. Very, very important. And I think this point about where is this middle, you know, where are the women? I mean, we have the occasional vice chancellor, we have the occasional chair of this, but the assembly is an exception. We have a really good record on women and women's participation, and the difference is huge. I'm not saying we're better, we're just very different than men. And I think we need to make sure that the women coming up behind us actually have opportunities. So how do we do that? I mean, and that's what these conferences are about. Should we do it? Um, we should give everybody confidence. And, and I know that you talk to British people, they want their children to be happy. You talk to American parents, they want their children to have confidence. And I think that's what we need to be looking at, is have a confident um, young, na uh, young nation coming forward. So I'd like to say thank you very much Murray, you've done a fantastic job here, uh, quite exceptional. So when you finish being artistic director, I think we could <coughs> get you chair of a national body of something. Uh, and I'd also like to thank our pa panel members who have shared openly their experiences. It's quite thought-provoking. We have to think about what you've, what you've actually done. And I would like to thank you all very much for coming. Um, I hope you found it useful. I've already... We're going to have a visit to Cardiff by the... Uh, I'm not sure what you call it. So women, farmers' wives in... I oh, sorry, wash my mouth out. It's open water. I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, they're going to come and visit Cardiff. We're possibly going to have an exhibition and perhaps bring some other people in South Wales, same interest together, so we can actually talk this talk this through. Um, I know we've got the fire service here today, um, and important that women uh, ha have a role. As you know, Wales is now the first place in the United Kingdom where fire sprinklers must be fitted to a new houses and that's down to a woman pushing it. Anne Jones, who is one of the local assembly members in North Wales, was a previous fire um, service worker, and now she's pushed that through. So you can make a difference. What I want to see you do is encouraging people to become members of school governors, members of the National Executive of the Women's uh, Institute, um, health boards, magistrates. There's a lot that you can actually offer. And why shouldn't you become community councillors? We have some here today. Um, county councillors, assembly members, and members of parliament. So um, I hope we've um, given you some inspiration, that you've made contacts here today that you wouldn't have previously, and that we're going to have a conference now in November, and we'll come up with some kind of things that we as assembly members can do, and you as uh, the real women of the world can actually do to make a difference for the future. So to Jochen Bauer, thank you very much, and thank you very much thank for the you panel. You've been fabulous. Yeah, Jochen Bauer. The National Assembly for Wales is the democratically elected body that represents the interests of Wales and its people, makes laws for Wales and holds the Welsh Government to account. For more information and to find out who represents you, go to assemblywales.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Cynulliad Cenedlaethol Cymru yw'r corff sy'n cael ei ethol yn ddemocrataidd i gynrychioli buddiannau Cymru a'i phobl. 
i ddeddfu ar gyfer Cymru ac i ddwyn Llywodraeth Cymru i gyfrif. I gael rhagor o wybodaeth ac i ganfod pwy sydd yn eich cynrychioli, ewch i cynulliadcymru.org neu gallwch chi'n dilyn ar Facebook a Twitter.